Kesha replies like this. If a person does not follow the Shastras or respect the priest, they will go to hell and experience sickness. They will have four and a half million rebirths and when they are finally born as a human, they will be a poor blind person who will become a beggar. It tells the story about previous life, which always read in a family after someone dies. According to this book, if you have done any heinous crime in your previous life, you will be born as a disabled person. And that was the time when I always felt everyone in a room stares at me because they know I am blind by birth. The word blind always became a problem for my family, especially to my mother. She was insulted by neighbors who had an opinion that my blindness was the result of her sin. Can you imagine that? But for me, my childhood seems normal. I play and run around with my sighted brother. When I was four years old, I wonder why people are saying I'm blind. I remember replying to them, hey, what do you mean I am blind? You all are blind too. But when I went to the school, for the first time, I met other blind children. We constantly bump into each other. From that day, I understood what is meant to be blind. And for the first and last time in my life, that was the night. I cried and I hated to be blind because I was embarrassed. I felt useless in society. Hey, it's okay. Don't worry. I overcame it. That's why I'm here. But I think I need to tell you one more thing, what I experienced. So what I, people started praising me for little, little things. For example, when I walk, they were like, Wow, you are so amazing. You can walk, obviously. I have no problem with my leg. I can walk. Oh my God, you can talk so confidently. Yeah, sure. Why not? Hmm, even you can eat by yourself. Hey, look at this amazing lady. She's pouring a glass of water by herself. How amazing she is. And this annoyed me a lot. So I became a rebel. You can feel from my voice, right? <laughs> so I started to participate in political and social activities. I represented Student Union of Communist Party. <laughs> and it's not because I'm blind, it's because I was capable. And I also work in a radio as a radio jockey. But can I tell you one thing? Wait, wait, you need to clap later. <laughs> okay, so when people recognize me, I am a radio jockey. You know what they said? Oh, really? But you don't sound like you are blind. <laughs> hmm, tell me how blind sound like. But anyway, let me tell you the truth. In Nepal, Blind people are considered to be a teacher, receptionist, musician, or even a beggar. I know it's similar in India, right? I was also fell in the same trap because I was Nepali and I'm blind too. So I gave teacher service commission exam to become a government certified teacher. And I passed the exam in the same time. I got a Fulbright scholarship to go to the USA. My choice was clear. Being a teacher means staying in my comfort zone. But for me, 
I always wanted to live my life independently. Obviously, I decided to go to the USA. There, I found less discrimination. You know what? People are telling, if I wanted to do anything, they're like, yes, it's your life. You can do whatever you want. It's your choice. Then I started to do lots of adventures, such as ice skating, sledding, rock climbing, swimming, even riding a bicycle. Wow. And you know, I often went shopping with my American friends, where they always asked my opinion, whatever they wanted to buy. I was taken seriously. And you know, they often invited me to their house to cook Nepali food for them. I'm telling the truth, trust me. And there I don't feel any stereotype that blind cannot cook. I was so happy. And that was the food which connected me with many, many friends. From that day, I started to think, hey, let's make this change in my own country too. So now I came with the idea of tick, tick, bite. where I want to train blind and partially sighted people in cooking, baking, and catering. I know, you are thinking, but how? Simple, like you do. <laughs> I also learned how to operate with the gas stove, how to stir and sizzle the food, just like you, right? Nothing is impossible. So they will not only learning cooking and catering, but they will also be learning marketing, packaging, purchasing, all those things which will make them independent. And the last day of the training, I want to invite a professional cook. I know we have today also. And several guests from outside, like you, who will come, try out, and evaluate our participants. And they will try out the food made by our friends. After that, our blind friend, will be delivering those food to the offices for our hungry customer. So let's see how this tick tick bite works. Priyanka, yeah? uh, we are going out to eat something. Would you like to join us? No, sorry, you can continue because I've just ordered something really nice for myself. Okay, yeah. I'm looking for Priyanka. I'm from Tik Tik Bite. The delicious Thank snacks here. Thank you. Oh, is that what you're waiting for? Yeah. Mmm, looks yummy. How can I order this? To order tasty snacks in Tik Tik Bites, please call 9849. 706-115 Hello, Tick Tick Bites, how can I help you? Sorry, 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 sorry. Because I got another order, you know. So, I have to be in my way, I'm sorry. But, next time, if you feel hungry, just remember Tick Tick Bites. Thank you.